You are listening to Salty Believer Unscripted, a conversation on Christian ministry and the Christian life. This is Salty Believer Unscripted. I'm Josiah Walker. I'm Brian Catherman. And I'm really excited to come to you today because we're in the studio together. Yeah, it's a new studio. Not through Zoom, uh, not on the telephone, but here in person. In Holdridge. New studio. Uh, I love the walls. A little more soundproofing, I think, than our old studio. Then in Salt Lake? Yes. I don't know. We, we don't. We might hear some outside the we'll office see. sounds. You guys will have to let us know when you listen. But we're coming to you from Nebraska. That's right. Together. Because yeah. why'd you come out here? Yeah, so I came out here uh, to go to a Charles Simeon Trust workshop with you and uh, continue growing my preaching. We've talked about the workshops in the past, so if you have a pastor that uh, you think he needs a permit to his preaching, you can recommend in those episodes too. But be kind. <laughs> hey, we really think you need to listen to these preaching podcasts. Yeah. No, I... Or if you're a preacher, you should go to the Simeon Trust workshops or go to the online stuff. For sure. That Charles Simeon stuff is amazing. Anyway, so here we are. So here we are. And on today's podcast, you know, it's November when we're recording this. And so Christmas is just around the corner. Thanksgiving's in a couple weeks. And so I was just thinking through uh, devotionals. A lot of times Mm -hmm. uh, people will do a a different devotional, take a break from the regular reading. For Christmas. For Christmas to do something special. Do you do that? Sometimes. Have you done it? Like, like... Full transparency, I think there are times where I've started a Christmas devotional, but I didn't finish the Christmas devotional. Gotcha, okay. So, if we're just really going to be transparent okay. here. Well, here's so here's why I found that it's helpful for me, is my family will do one for Advent. Yeah. You know, we're not, you know, I I have a Baptist in theology, but I'm at a, I'm at a free church now. Uh, but theologically, like, I haven't... I haven't really been one who practices a lot of that sort of Advent church calendar stuff. Sure. But I do like every uh, Sunday in, in the Christmas season doing one of those. And so usually there's like a book. There's some really good studies. We've selected some good studies. They don't always just anchor in, you know, hope, love, faith. They don't. Right. They're, they're some, some of the ones we've done have been really, really great. And I've really enjoyed them. I'm trying to remember off the top of my head what they are. But anyway. So you keep kind of doing your regular devotional that you do. Personally, by yourself each day. Yes. But then as a family, you guys come together and do... Because it's like a one once a week deal. Yeah. So we'll do that. I'm pretty sure we'll do that this year. We might pull one of the other books off the shelf. Lisa, my wife, might have bought a new one. She's really good at picking these out. She loves sure. it. Well, and Lifeway always pr- produces an Advent guide for families and right. stuff. And I usually go on and download that and utilize that resource. Kind of like, because they do some free ones. And yeah, stuff. there's some free ones that have kind of like an activity and a small devotional and a memory verse and usually like a coloring page or something like that. Right. So it's really fun for kids and that. And, and then you have, you have like... Uh, the daily type devotionals for Christmas. Yeah. I think I don't use daily bread as a, yeah, as our a devotional church, thing, but our church gets the daily bread we'll and they usually do a Christmas one. So we'll get that. Um, but then there's some a little beefier. Like Alistair Bake has some that so, I've picked up in the past. So my wife is who we should be talking about because she'll we should add, have interviewed her. Yeah, we should have. We will add she's really good about this. She'll add usually every Christmas season um, some kind of daily devotional study. Mm. Uh, so she likes, she's done one or two years, she's done the uh, Daily Devotionals by Alistair Begg. And so she will sometimes... Um, you said add daily. So does she add this on top of her regular devotional? She does. Yeah, okay. Christmas time, you know... It's not in replace of. When there's not a lot of light, when everybody's kind of hibernating and you're in the house more, she feels yeah. like she has a little more time That makes sense in the house. So that's why she adds at this time of year. She likes to do it for Christmas. And so she'll pick... Something, but she so her her study is insane. This woman studies the Bible. She's learning to like teach it better. But she um she has usually a one year reading plan. She has some book of the Bible study that she's also doing. Usually it's like a Lydia Brownback something or other yeah. high level whatever Christopher Ash something a pretty high intensity study that she's doing to study a specific book. So she's reading devotionally something. She's doing that with a specific book. She usually is listening to the Bible as well while she's taking a shower, like on a different sure. reading plan. Sure. And then at Christmas she'll add one of these. Well, one wow. year, one year her thing was that all all that reading plan, and then not at Christmas she did a 365 day Alistair yeah. Begg thing instead of maybe the in depth book study. And then she liked it so much that then she said, I'm going to do, I think she did the Christmas one from there. Yeah. And it was really helpful. Like, she really found it to be edifying and good. She enjoyed it. It sounds great. And I'm sure some of our listeners are sitting here going, that's awesome. Yeah, I'll just add this to my daily reading. What happens if you do that? You add something, and then you find out maybe after a couple of weeks you don't have the time to do both. 
Do you, do you bail on one in favor of the other? I would say do whatever you can to be in God's Word well. So if you're reading the Bible, and that's part of your plan, and then you have something else on top of that that has some commentary. So Alistair Begg's offering commentary right. on a verse rather than just the Bible. I would say you probably always, always, always should really make just reading the Bible the top priority, but all these other things add sure. so much depth and richness to going along and studying along with an author who's put this stuff together. So if you only could do one thing, I'd say read God's Word Absolutely. as much as you can. Right? I think that's such a great point. I know there have been a lot of times in the past where I've bailed on a devotional and then I just end up feeling guilty, you right. know, or I don't know which one to choose if I'm doing multiple ones. So I think that's a good point of just really just going back to the Bible at the very least. And, and uh, don't feel, I mean, you shouldn't be guilted right. into wanting to engage an encounter with the living God speaking to you. That There should there should be some sense of, okay, joy. Now, sometimes I get up and I'm like, oh, man, I'm not I'm not feeling a, a read through yeah. the book of Numbers right now. You know, whatever I, you sure. know. But then as I start to get going into it, I recognize just like exercise is good for you over the long haul and not just one off. And eating yeah. healthy is a good thing to do over the long haul and not just one off. Reading the Bible yeah. over the long haul is a good thing to do, and not just like, oh, I got one reading in, right. and then nothing, and then, you know. Well, and and what I love is that there's so many scalable resources. I mean, we're blessed with a variety of, like, really beefy, intense oh, studies, yeah. you know. To and we are the blessed. Daily bread. We are we blessed. We are blessed. I mean, so. we just went to a, we went to the Possibilities Africa banquet, yeah, uh, which is, it's a great looking ministry, right? We went and, and saw Martin talk. You've interviewed about, them on the podcast before, right? Uh, I don't know. I don't think we have yet. Oh, okay. That would be a good topic to put yeah. on the, the podcast, though. So maybe we did. I have to remember. I've, I've spent a lot of time talking with them. I'm not sure if we brought that into this sure. sphere of what I do, but. Uh, but they do so, ministry in Africa. Yeah. Training up pastors training and up stuff. Africans training pastors in Africa and Africans taking care of Africans. It's a really good ministry model. But. Uh, I was really struck when he said, you know, we have all these thousands of Christians who don't own a Bible and pastors who learn, but the Bible right. studies get together and then they all sit around a table because one person owns a Bible. Now, here's right. the tricky part, though. We could just send them a whole bunch of Bibles. We could print that. But one of the things he said is, you know, these individuals that are here need to recognize the value of not taking the handout but making some effort to buy their Bible. For sure. And then they'll cherish their Bible. And so it was, a, but his point really struck me. Yeah. We're so blessed that I could pull nine Bibles off my shelf if they could read English and just send them. Right. You know? But there is, there, and that's the key is at the end of the day, you need to have a Bible that you're going to read. Like right. One day we should probably do a podcast on like premium Bibles and cheap Bibles. It doesn't really make a difference yeah. which Bible you buy. Well, a font size <laughs> makes a difference for if I can read it or not. <laughs> so we should talk about tips and tricks to getting a Bible you'll actually read. But what I love is, is for Christmas, if you if you only have time to read the Bible, you could go through the book of Luke, right? There's yeah. 24 chapters in Luke. Do it for and, the month. And read a chapter a day and, and you'll see all of Christ's uh, Earthly ministry from birth through the resurrection. For sure. Um, then there's daily bread options. We've talked about some devotionals from Alistair Begg, and, and those don't seem too thick. And I They're... think like John Piper had a Christmas one. Not, yeah. And here's the thing. If it's really good, it's not going to matter if it's five years old. Right. Or 25 years old. Or 250 years old. If it's really focused on the Word of God, go with that. Do you ever find yourself going through devotionals that you've read before? Uh, so I really like, I've done this twice, um... J.I. Packer did a 365-day devotional. It's just a daily devotional yeah. thing. One page. And I read it a long time ago. I, I, I don't know where I got the book from. Sure. It was one of those, like, I don't know if I found it at a used bookstore or something. And I remember going through that. And then I did it again another time. The other thing I do, by the way, since we're talking about devotionals, I have that one over on my desk. That's um, uh, The Leadership. Or grab it. Hold on. Yeah. Um, I suddenly forgot the uh, tozer. So, it's, so here we go. I'm coming back. So it's Tozer on Christian Leadership, a 366-day devotional. Because mm. um, one day, like, well, you sure. can read it for yourself and see why he has the extra day. Uh, and it's just, it's short. Like, I'm showing you, like, it's just one yeah. page. But it's more in-depth than, yeah. like, a daily bread for sure. me. And it's, so, like, I have this here in the church office. Sure. And I come in, and if I'm here that morning and I have a little bit of time, not running, I pick it up, I'll read that day. I like these ones. They have a date on them. Right. If I miss the date, yeah, I just pick up whatever day I'm on. For sure. So some of them are like I'm doing pages 
and I don't know if there's 365 yeah. devotionals, do whatever. This one actually has a date of the year. Oh, that's why it's 66. I forgot because oh. of leap year. Oh, um, okay. I was like, he's sick. I'm, I can't remember why it was. Anyway, so, I love those two because I have one by Richard Sibbs. Oh yeah, uh, yeah, reflections that's a, yeah. from the Heavenly Doctor, and I love that too because it has just the dates. Because sometimes I'll feel guilty, you know, and, and you're trying to get through it. And this way, I just think, well, I'll just I'll read just, for that day. I'll just keep it going. You know? And that's how that's how J. I. Packers was, which is why. I really like that one. I think that might be how Alistair Beggs is that my wife... I don't remember. So here's the thing, though. Most of these, for me, are not like Christmas ones. Right. If this is going to be your regular ongoing habit, and you're doing what you typically do, and then you want to incorporate a Christmas one, you're not really adding. You might be taking... You might be pausing sure. on one right. and picking up on another. Because you could pause on that one. Yeah. If, if you read it every year, you've probably read those things. Yeah. Um, I like doing Christmas-specific devotionals. I mean, we do that a lot with our sermon series in churches, where you stop going through a book of the Bible and you pause for Christmas. So let me ask you this. Um, this might be a topic for another conversation. I don't know. Why do we feel like we need the whole month? Now, Christmas is wonderful. Sure. Don't get me wrong. Shouldn't we always be about the death, resurrection, the death, the, excuse me, the birth, the death, the perfect... Let me pause. Sure. The birth. Yes. The perfect life. Yep. The death, the burial, the resurrection, and the ascension of Jesus Christ. So, Absolutely. So, like, I love that we celebrate Christmas for a month. I wish we celebrated Easter for a month. Yeah. You know, like, I think doing a Christmas devotional is kind of like doing the things that people do in preparation for Easter. But a lot of yeah. times they'll do Lent or something where they right. sacrifice. They say, I'm not going to do that. I'm going to do some works. Right. To prepare me for the cross. That's usually how I feel when I do something like Lent. Sure. It feels like works. I'd rather do like just an Easter devotional for a yeah. month and a Christmas devotional for a month if I was really going to do that. It's hard because Easter moves around, so it's at a different time every year. Right. right. But it I, makes it hard for publishers to think, put <laughs> dates on devotionals. I think the reason we do that, though, is that it's a reminder and it's kind of a reset. Just like every January, many of us will reset and start a new devotional plan or a new right. kind of whatever. And um, resolutions. Yeah. And churches sometimes do their so. vision stuff there instead right. of somewhere else. So I think it's just a reminder to pause. Examine your life. Examine the Christ place in your life. That's why I love, like, uh, Jonathan Gibson does a devotional called Be Thou My Vision. Oh, yeah. And it's pretty beefy. You could almost use it for, like, a family devotional because it's got, like, a, a, a reading in there and a little study, but it also has some, like, hymns or songs. How many sing. pages are these? What are we talking about? Those are, like, I don't know, probably a few hundred pages because it's I got... Mean, like, per devotional. Per devotional. It, it, it depends on how you do it because, like I said, it's got... What it is is it's got three or four different sections to it. So it's okay. got like a, a catechism, oh, you know, right. and it's got a hymn, and it's got you know a devotional, and so and then it's got like a, a page that says, "Hey, read this today," you know, yeah. out of your Bible. So you can use it for a family devotional. But he has one that's called "Be Thou My Vision." That's just a general devotional. But then he's got a forty day one for for Christmas called "O Come, O Come, Emmanuel." And I think he has another one for Easter. These sound like epic titles. <laughs> right? Yeah, it's all about the title. So they can be a little daunting, but they could be another resource, like you said, that you can do for families. Um, but the important How? thing is that we're just focusing on Christ. Right, right. Which So then that, that raises the question, do you need to make sure you're focusing on the opening of Luke and the opening of Matthew and the birth of Christ? Or can you focus on Christ and read, could you do a Christmas, uh, a Christmas devotional time by reading through Ezekiel? Sure. Right or, <laughs> or could you do a Christmas devotional in July? In July, <laughs> you know. yeah. Could you read about Luke and the birth of Christ and Matthew so. and, and in July and the coming king and the son of God, the son of David, the son of Abraham, like all this stuff, right? right. You could. Yeah. But it, I think it's just because we're already in a regular rhythm and we're in, a, we're in a natural holiday calendar, which is why the church calendar, which, like I said, my tradition, I don't, I don't use right. the church calendar a whole lot. It's interesting. It's really interesting. But that's partly what the church calendar was for, was to drive right. your thinking on a regular rhythm back to these seasons and back to these certain things that happen that would, would draw our focus to Christ in one way or another, which is pretty cool. Yeah. It's pretty cool. And that's really the key is is that we're spending that time with God. So maybe I pick up Jonathan Gibson's book and I go, oh, this is too beady, it's too... It's too much for me. Should I feel guilty if I'm just doing our daily bread? I just told you, man. Don't do. Don't be guilty. Do I, do like, I feel like less of a Christian? Do you have joy? You should have joy. So here's what I mean. It's good. It is good that you set yourself to some goals with ambition. And you say I'm going to do this, and so maybe there could be conviction. Hey, I'm not reaching the goal that I wanted to reach, so I can encounter the Lord. But I don't think there should be guilt, like I'm not doing enough, right? Um, unless God's really telling you, hey, you need to be 
doing this, you need to be reading more. And that's conviction, that's not guilt. Guilt, you know, is really something entirely different. And you're free to work and encounter Christ and how you would best do this. So I don't think you shouldn't feel guilty. Also, you shouldn't let other people who say everyone should do blank or this right. is what you must do. That could really be legalism, potentially. Yeah. But you shouldn't let them bring you into guilt. Right. Okay, my, my wife has time. She has a lot of study. Sure. And sometimes I look at that and go, wow, that should motivate me to think, wow, I could really be right. edified and blessed to do more study. But sure. sometimes I go, uh... She's really much more holy than me, but I'm right. the pastor, and, blah, and that's not right. Right, and and we all have different schedules, uh, different things going on, yeah. you know. Uh, and you're in the season of life where you're taking kids to school every day and packing lunches. That's different than if your kids are grown and out of the house and off to college, right. you know. Right. Um, and so they're, what's great is, like, I'll just come back to it again, is how blessed we are with all the different resources of being able to listen to a devotional or a Bible reading plan right. in the car or while we're in the shower or on the exercise bike and, and reading the Bible and, and doing a plan but the important thing is that we're doing something and i don't think you should feel guilty if you pause here and there i've got a uh, a one-year bible plan i've been working on four years right because i'll pause it and work on something else for a season that's right and it so and it shouldn't i mean i I think the best thing i know that's a judgment statement but is that you have some plan right that's driving you to hear from the lord to read his word so if it's a four, if it's a one-year Bible plan that you've paused, right. but you're doing something else, well, you have a plan. Right. What doesn't go well for most people is no plan. Right. The key right. is, are you spending daily time with God? Yeah. And I think a lot of times we'll find ourselves locked into a plan of like, well, this is the plan I selected for this year, so I just got to do it, but we're not enjoying it. Yeah. I, I think we should feel free to jettison a plan for, sure. for something else that's actually driving us to God. For sure. And different seasons of your life might make the plan great or sure. not great. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, God might have a different idea for what you're doing. So you started this whole thing with Christmas devotionals. Right. Some people might not be doing any devotional thing, and maybe Christmas is now a time where they first get to introduce this, yeah. and maybe the devotional book helps them get yeah. into that more. Maybe yeah, because you know, maybe I read guy. a story yeah. in Matthew, and then I go to read it further in my Bible and just keep reading Matthew because I just fall in love with the narrative and the story there. Right. And I think the other key, too, is is to not feel guilty because someone's devotional style is different than yours. Oh, I mean, yeah. You talked about not feeling as holy because your wife's style is different than yours. Yeah, just joking. My, yeah. my wife and I tried to sit down and do a Bible reading time together in the morning to help encourage one another to be faithful in it. And it ended up kind of being more frustrating than it was beneficial because her study style is very different than mine. Yeah. <laughs> you know, yeah. God... God God doesn't get the best of Joe in the morning. <laughs> you know, if he's waking up, he's getting going, you know, and she just wanted to spend a lot more time than I did. I wanted to spend about 15 minutes and she wanted to spend like 30 minutes. Right. And so it was just, right. we found it was better to just do our own thing and then come together and talk about it later. So, so you found what worked best for right. you. Right. Which is good. I, I get around people where I'm at here, you know, there's quite a lot of people at this church. Mm-hmm. And some really cherish and love and find it to be incredibly a, a wonderful blessing to engage yeah. in pretty extensive and serious fasting. Yeah. And I've spoken with some of those folks. Yeah. And some really love scripture memory. In fact, our, our staff is memorizing like 20 verses of Ephesians. That's awesome. and, and so they love it. And I'm, it's not my favorite. I like sure. having some stuff, but this is taking me a lot more effort than it's taking others. Some love large swath reading of huge things, sitting down and reading things, you know, some yeah. love lots of little pieces, some like, yeah. we just, we, we just benefit differently. I would say though, don't let just what you like drive what you do. Right. Sometimes it's been yeah. really good for me to be pressed into this, this scripture memory. I've not, I'm not one that memorizes large chunks of scripture, but memorizing a large chunk of scripture has actually been really edifying for me to do it. It's not what I enjoy, yeah. but it has been good. And I don't really ever find that fasting is something I go, wow, I love fasting. Right. Sure. Right. But it's good for me. Um, singing. I'm not one that just sings, but I've started to adopt a process of I'm going to sing this song here at my house on my own or whatever. Like there's yeah. just, there's many things. Sometimes it's that quiet time praying. Sometimes it's, I love having my radio off in the car. I don't ever listen to stuff. I just usually pray. And occasionally I'll listen to scripture when I'm driving around. But what's odd is someone gets in my car, and I am so just used to not having the anything going on, and they're not. Right. And so then it feels like, oh man, it's so quiet in here. We're driving forever, and let's no. turn the radio on. <laughs> a lot of times that becomes a great opportunity uh, for reflection 
and just meditating with Christ. Yeah. And uh, and I think that's the important thing. I'll just keep coming back to that. I know this was supposed to be about Christmas devotional, so we kind of ended up all over the place. But the best thing is that you're spending time with God regularly. Yeah. You know, yeah. and if, if this Christmas season is a time that really helps you to jumpstart that, to maybe pick up a Christmas devotional and spend some time in God's word and, and abiding with him, then praise God. You know, yep. uh, if you're already doing that, then I would encourage you to, to add something to it. If you'd like to add a little Christmas flair to your devotional. Or step it up. Or step Maybe it up. Maybe go from something small like daily yeah. bread to something a little more. A little beefier. Yeah. Uh, so just in a real quick as we're closing, uh, Al Shabeg, great resources there. Yep. Any other authors you'd recommend? I, I, In the back of my mind, I think the Piper has done a Christmas yeah. one. The problem is I don't look for the Christmas ones. Sure. So I think if you were to look for Christmas devotional, don't. Mm. Just buy the first thing that comes up on the bookstore website. Right? Correct. Like, don't do that. Yeah. Look through them and, and look at the authors. And if you have questions, you know, send us an email, yeah. Salty Believer. Is it Salty Believer at Yeah, gmail. Salty Believer at gmail.com or go to saltybeliever.com and fill out our contact form on there. Yeah, and say, hey, look, I'm looking at this Christmas resource with, by this author. Is this person, you know. Or maybe you have a resource that you'd like to recommend to our yeah. listeners. Go ahead and drop us a line of what that is. Um, I yeah. mentioned Richard Sibbs. Uh, that's oh, just a yearly devotional. Yeah. Uh, that's great. You mentioned uh, A.W. Tozer. Once again, just a yearly devotional. Uh, but if these are things we can add to kind of beef up our devotional the, time. the J, If you're talking about yearly devotionals, the J.I. Packer 365-day yeah. daily devotional is outstanding. Paul David Tripp does a new Morning Mercies. He does, yeah. Uh, and then you can go to some of the classics. You can go to uh, Oswald Chambers. Oh, yeah. You can probably get that well, for free. Highest. And then you can go to like Spurgeon's his Faith Checkbook. He's done a few. Faith Checkbook, Morning and Evening. Yeah. Spurgeon has some. It just depends on, you know, that's a that's a couple centuries ago in your writing style. So you might not like that, but there's there's a lot of stuff out there. Praise God. Well, until next time then, O come, O come, Emmanuel. Thanks for listening. Salty Believer Unscripted is a production of saltybeliever.com. Visit the website to find more resources like the podcast you've just listened to.